G'day folks, welcome to my February collection update. G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. It's a stinking hot day here today, it's uh, 38 degrees Celsius, which is about 100 Fahrenheit, so I'm staying inside, ain't no gardening being done today, so don't worry, I'm keeping myself hydrated with this uh, lovely beer. This is a Raspberry Frappuccino White Stout from Guaylo, which is a Hong Kong brewery that brewed it in WA apparently, so yeah, very good, pretty tasty. Very odd looking for a stout, I always find white stouts a bit strange, but oh well. So I decided to do the Aussie bands that I received first, so first up is Internal Rot with their Hack Session EP, it's not really an album I don't think, but close enough. Uh, this was recorded back in their early days in 2011, um, this is recorded by Colin from um, Kralis and about a million other bands and Gorguts for a time uh, at his studio in New York. Um, this was, was recorded on the, um, I think they came across for the MDF because Double Dover played there and so did The Kill and um, yeah, I'm guessing Brad and Max were around as well so uh, yeah Brad was definitely there. I have the incriminating footage of him running around naked on stage <laughs> during either The Kill or, or I think and Doubled Over. Yeah that was a messy weekend. Glad you recorded this the week before MDF. Um, so yeah, at any rate, it's um, a whole lot of pretty early tracks. I mean, this is a couple of years before they put out uh, Mental Hygiene, let alone Grieving Birth, which was a number of years later. For some reason this didn't come out on CD until 2019 and only recently on record, so uh, I figured what the hell. I got this off Christoph the Drummer, uh, as well as the next release that I've got. So, But yeah, this is uh, <laughs> nasty, nasty stuff. Um, it's really good actually to hear this with a really clear sound. It sounds better than the sort of EPs and rehearsal stuff that was released around the same time. So uh, there's a couple of tracks that are off um, Mental Hygiene, but yeah, mostly old. I don't know, didn't make the album tracks. So uh, yeah, it's, it's good bloody mix. Christoph, I think it sounds a smidge faster on this, but yeah, the, the, the sound is bloody excellent. I mean, this band has no bass, so it's all guitars. And yeah, just comes out perfectly and maxes. <laughs> bloody insane vocals are yeah everything very nicely balanced so i did already have this on cd but yeah what the hell uh, i want to help the band out and have a pretty record so yeah um yeah i definitely recommend you checking this one out if if you're an internal rot fan if not do it anyway also from christoph i got this uh two morden split with derailment which came out on uh nerve alter so two morden are american band from virginia i think um yeah, just sort of death grindy kind of band. Pretty friggin' tough sounding, catchy riffing, um, good sort of sludgy sound. It actually reminded me of Blood Duster a bit for some reason. Um, and there's a nice uh, Enemy Soil song where they slow down the slow bit at the end. Uh, sounds bloody awesome. So, yeah, not too bad. Uh, I mainly bought it though for the derailment side because I love these guys. They're a sludge sort of band from Melbourne. Um, and yeah, they're channeling thug yet again on this which is certainly fine by me there's two songs here the second one's a, a bit faster but yeah oh man these dudes are tough tough bloody riffs uh they've both actually got sort of cleanish vocals on them which actually works surprisingly well i was sort of surprised but um so yeah i can't recommend span more highly enough and i'd also definitely recommend their album which i've had for a while but um yeah come clean in death it's a very bloody good album I, th I have a bad feeling I haven't seen these guys live, maybe once, so yeah, very keen. I'm hoping they play Canberra at some stage, so Brad, if you're listening, dude. Uh, yeah, derailment, they kick ass. Next up is a release that I got from Bloody Oath Records. This is Undernism with their uh, hatecore kind of discography. Not quite. For some reason this doesn't have the gonculator split that was on their previous version of this discography, which has all these same songs, plus a few more, so... I don't know, maybe they couldn't get the rights to Gonculator or what, but I've got to say, I'm not a fan of that cover art, so let's look at the back, which is Singer Neil covered in blood, as per usual. Um, uh, honestly, I've never been a giantest fan of Undernism. I never did see them live, though. I think that might be the problem. Uh, they were pretty legendary for crazed live shows, mostly from Neil. I think he was a big uh, wrestling fan, and I'm not sure if it was in The Kill or it was Undernism. He was the original singer of The Kill as well there's been a ton of other bands um yeah but he used to do you know like barbed wire and broken glass and yeah i think he had the classic you know cut your forehead and drenched in blood sort of style so uh 
yeah, they were pretty memorable shows from all reports. But um, recording, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's 30 years old. Uh, never, never been my favourite band, but yeah, it's still good, enjoyable, fun stuff. I've, <laughs> highly offensive. All right, I'm glad they didn't include the lyrics, although the um, this version, unfortunately, I think has some lyrics and yeah, pretty poor taste. I'm certainly not going to read out any song titles. I yeah, you could probably read them anyway, but oh well. Um, yeah, I've always loved uh, the the sound quality is pretty average on a lot of these really to tell the truth. I think the demo probably sounds the best. Uh, so yeah, it's all pretty bloody raw. Um, yeah, I always love that. There's a Cosmic Commando intro rant from uh, must be one of their gigs. It's like a, a you know a wrestling star who um, <laughs> this is hilarious intro just paying the shit out of the crowd. It was uh, very enjoyable. Uh, but yeah, the the favourite stuff of mine is probably the Dead Girls Don't Say No tracks that, um, yeah, just actually sound a bit better. But, yeah, so I'm not quite sure why I bought this one. I have the CD and I'm not a huge fan of the band, but how are they all? So, yeah, good old underneath. Up next is one I got from the band. This is Alters with Aesthetic Reflection. Uh, this one, I think it actually came out last year, but the, the record version only came out recently, so happy to pick that one up. Um, this is a South Australia band from... I don't know, it started in 2005, I think they split in about 2016, but got back together in 2021 with Brendan from uh, Convulsing. Um, yeah, to tell the truth, this band kind of missed me. Uh, I don't have any of their other releases. I'm kind of definitely keen to get their previous album, Paramnesia. Because, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know why I miss these guys. Uh, <laughs> I did notice that I actually have them on my, uh, in my uh, iTunes library, but yeah, I just never listened to them enough for some reason so I'm glad I finally got around to it because this is a bloody killer this is very dissonant sort of death metal uh, this is a bit more dissonant and weird than Paramnesia or their previous one which is a bit more I don't know, morbid angel-y sounding to me um, but yeah there's a pretty good history of um, weird dissonant sort of stuff in Australia there's you know your Stargazer uh, Faceless Burial there's Ulcerate from Across the Ditch and of course uh, Portal and uh various similar bands um but yeah these guys are whew, bloody hell class of their own almost this is a very impressive album it's gonna take a, a lot more to digest than the first couple of listens that i've given it but yeah really enjoying this i'm kicking myself i did not go see these guys live uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago played in canberra with um convulsing and maybe just i think futility as well and yeah i, I watched footage of it but for some reason didn't go to the gig what an idiot oh well um but yeah there's just heaps of heaps of killer riffs i uh, sort of i would call it tech it's it's not technical death metal it is death metal played technically very well uh, <laughs> if you know the difference um but yeah it's just fast nasty dense sort of stuff um the title track actually reminds me a bit of um voivod in parts for some reason uh, i think luminous jar is the, the the one that stood out the most initially it's just um crazy time changes and stuff in that and yeah this comes with like very spiffy artwork I quite enjoy it and don't know what's going on in the inside the gatefold but yeah very happy to have this one so yeah i'll have to track down paramnesia and i think there's a split as well before this and maybe a demo so yeah this is killer band the next four releases that I have here are all relapse reissues that I just got directly from them because why not? The postage is pretty reasonable and come pretty quick. So, first up is Nile with Among the Catacombs of Nephron Car. Um, as you may have seen on my relapse video, this is on there as one of my favourite relapse releases. So, yeah, you can check that one out for more extensive rambling. But, yeah, I just love this one. I'm so glad I picked this out of um, a list of CDs to review for old. Um, street ma a street press magazine i used to write for called bma because yeah this one was just like far out um yeah this is just wild intense death metal it's like 11 songs in 33 minutes it's all, it's all over pretty rapid but it's just no wasted time on this one i love it just short and concise just the later ones have way too much sort of dragging on kind of all right slow average sort of bits for my liking and I'd actually really like to prefer the less fancy drumming on this. Well, I wouldn't say less fancy, but less tricky drumming of George Collius that, yeah, I don't know, it's a bit too, too much. This actually has occasional moments of time to breathe, which is nice. 
but yeah to me this still sounds fresh and original it's um timeless for me so yeah bloody awesome also from Nile is their second album Black Seeds of Vengeance um yeah this one is pretty bloody impressive I think this one made a bit more of a hit than the other one although I still prefer Amongst the Catacombs uh this is the first album with Dallas Toller Wade and on second guitar and vocals and yeah he sounds great on it it's also got Derek Roddy filling in on drums for some reason Pete Hamura is on like one song on this but that's it um which I think is a weird instrumental kind of song possibly so yeah I don't know Derek's just you know, he's a very capable drummer but well, it's just less inspired I've got to say um but yeah you can't go wrong with some of these song titles uh, <laughs> Masturbating the War God uh, and the classic Libation Unto the Shades Who Lurk in the Shadows of the Temple of Anhur. <laughs> oh, and also Chapter for Transforming into a Snake, another classic. Um, but yeah, some of these songs are great. I mean, the, the hi highlight for me probably is the title track, Black Seeds of Vengeance. The heavy bit at the end is just killer. Uh, Masturbating the War God rules as well. That was on a lot of compilations, so I, I think I knew the one ahead of time. And yeah, I, I love the, the chanting in Defiling the Gates of Ishtar, but there's not enough of that wacky Egyptian-y sounding uh, instruments on the first album for my liking. This is a bit more serious, a bit less crazy. One thing I do like about it though is that it um, comes with like liner notes to each song, essentially, which is, um, yeah, explaining the Egyptian history behind it and all that sort of jazz. So uh, I, I do like a band that takes themselves seriously like that in as far as their lyrical content so yeah uh, I'm very happy to have this on record I, th I think I only recently got this on CD anyway I had a rip of it for many a year so yeah killer album another recent re relapse reissue is good old suffocation with human waste <laughs> I love this album and uh, I think I think it must have been on one of my my album covers that aren't Iron Maiden video because I was trying to think of where I rambled about this before but yeah that cover up without the glare is <laughs> bloody awesome um yeah I've, I've had this forever really on cd but this one had a couple of extra tracks from the the other two songs from the re video or demo which is uh, involuntary slaughter and re um they were re-recorded for um what's it called effigy the forgotten but and they <laughs> to tell the truth those versions had a shitload better than the demo version but how what they are um but yeah this is the first suffocation ep uh, obviously they've done the, that demo beforehand and this always had the first song human waste tacked on the end anyway um but yeah the the proper ep tracks i mean this is starts with infecting the cribs one of their best songs far out uh frank sounds just massive on this uh i, I kind of like as well that he, he's he's not quite cupping quite as much he's just like intense <laughs> bloody vocals um and yeah all, all these songs were redone on effigy really but oh and, and later tracks i think i think synthetically revived is on uh, maybe that's on breeding the spawn i don't know but at any rate suffocation <laughs> you can't go past this ep it's raw as hell you know later stuff sounds much better um but yeah awesome and lastly from Relapse is More Suffocation with their Despise the Sun EP. Uh, this one, this is their last sort of release that they did before they split up for a couple of years. So this is the last one with both Doug Cerrito and uh, bass player Chris Richards on it. So, uh, and he, he sounds bloody good. I always liked him, even though even with his weird stage get up of like a crop top and cowboy boots. But anyway, what the hell, guy could play bass, that's for sure. Um... Yeah, uh, again, I've, I've also had this for an eternity on CD, and I kind of prefer the CD cover art, but eh, what the hell. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I think the song Funeral Inception is the first song on this. That's uh, definitely one of their live classic sort of songs uh, for the God forbid heavy bit at the end. Is, yeah, <laughs> gets the crowd going, that's for sure. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of sort of, bit average songs on this to tell the truth and especially considering this is coming after Pierce from Within which is definitely my favourite Suffocation album I was kind of surprised at the lack of quality I mean Despise the Sun itself is a pretty good song um, but yeah it just didn't seem quite up to that standard but one song that really does is Catatonia which is uh, apparently the first song they ever wrote and also off previous EP uh, Human Waste but yeah the version on this is just and this has got um, Dave Carl Ross on drums, who's gotten around, I think. He's been in plenty of bands, but 
yeah, his drumming on, especially on Catatonia, is just insane. <laughs> Holy dooly. I mean, that song's are heavy as hell, but when it gets, there's a couple of like really fast double bassy, fast vocal bits that are just out of this world on this one. So yeah, I was I was very sad when this came out because they split up after it, but um, I'm glad they got back together. All to tell the truth, none of their more recent stuff's quite grabbed me anywhere near as much as the older stuff. So yeah, good old stuff, eh? Up next is one I saw secondhand at Landspeed Records in Canberra, so uh, I was very pleased to grab this one. It's uh, My Dying Bride with The Ghost of Orion. This is their most recent album um, from, I don't know, a couple of years ago. 2020. Um, yeah, to tell the truth, when I first heard this, it really didn't grab me a huge amount, so I'm glad I persisted and just grabbed the vinyl because I thought, ah, cheap My Dying Bride, why not? Because, um, yeah, to tell the truth, it's really grown on me. I think I think I was confusing it with uh, Feel the Misery, the album before this, that uh, it still doesn't really grab me, to tell the truth. I don't know, I mean, it's still my dying bride. It's got, it's got growly vocals again, and uh, it still sounds pretty good, but yeah, this one I think is quite a bit better. Um, this is the first album since uh, Calvin left the band again, but yeah, they seem to, seem to still be kicking along strong. Uh, there's some nice female vocals on, um, oh, what is it? The Solace, I think it's called, uh, from um, Linda Fay from Wardruna. So yeah, that, they sound bloody nice. I'm surprised they haven't used more female vocals over the years, to tell the truth. And there's good, good amount of violin on this as well, which I always like <laughs> for my dying bride. Um, and yeah, this is, um, I think this was delayed, or the writing of it was because um, the singer's daughter had... Um, I was a kidney cancer, I think, but apparently she's in recovery, so I'm very glad to hear that. So, um, but yeah, I think that inspired definitely some of the songs, um, Tired of Tears from the, the sound of it. But, um, yeah, so made a already depressing band <laughs> even more depressing, but yeah, it's a pretty good album, I reckon. Very much looking forward to what they, they come out with next. I'm hoping one day, fingers crossed, that they might actually tour Australia. I've only been going for like 35 years or something or other, but, uh, uh, I did see them at MDF one year in America, so and they were freaking amazing. I kind of was wondering how they'd go to a death metal festival, and yeah, very well. It was still all, you know, like, um, Singer Diddy's pained, you know. <laughs> but, um, it was just, but yeah, them, it was them after Candlemas, so it was Candlemas and then My Dying Bride, which, yeah, was very impressive. Last couple of bands on the outdoor stage at MDF, so, but yeah. I love this band. I've been a fan of theirs since very early days when I used to have one of their clips to uh, Symphony Air on Rage, which is a pretty awful clip, really, but the song's killer, so yeah, good old My Dying Bride. Uh, also from Landspeed and bought mainly because I had a voucher from Christmas, so thanks, Dad. Because, <laughs> yeah, this this wasn't cheap to tell the truth, but uh, it's something I've been after for a long time. This is uh, Celtic Frost with Morbid Tales. Uh, so this is their first sort of EP kind of thing after they morphed from Hellhammer into Celtic Frost. Um, I was always confused. I, initially, I had I've got like a CD somewhere of um, this and the Emperor's Return, so I could never remember what was on what. So they all sound pretty similar. Um, but this one apparently is the US the Metal Blade version of Morbid Tales because it's got uh, Dethroned Emperor on it and another track I can't remember of which. But for some reason. I don't know why, even though there's two LPs, they didn't bung on, um, what is there, what's lacking? Oh, Circle of the Tyrant, Suicidal Winds and Visual Aggression, but I'm not sure why they didn't re-release that, maybe so they could bung it in that fancy box set, I suppose, but at any rate, I'm still happy to have this. This one, uh, Sides 3 and 4 are actually rehearsal tracks from 1984 that I haven't worked it out exactly, but they sound very similar to this bootleg one that I got not that long ago. <laughs> which uh, sounds surprisingly bloody good and has more than four tracks. I don't know why they only have four tracks on sides three and four. Surely they could fit more than that, but oh well. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to this. Um, yeah, Celtic Frost. This is, um, I don't know, I'm never quite sure if these guys are quite considered thrash or just metal. To me, this is a precursor of death metal. Um, sounds very bloody similar. I mean, it doesn't hurt that uh, Kel uh, what's her name? Arbitrary were big fans as well, but so whatever the hell this is is bloody awesome. Uh, this is actually probably my favorite era stuff. Um, 
this and the yeah then the, the throne emperor ep as well uh it's just raw as hell but just catchy catchy bloody stuff that man could write some riffs that's a bloody sure um and yeah just tense vocals great songs oh, you just can't go wrong really um i mean i'm, I'm a big fan of into the pandemonium and um oh, what is it two megatherian although I've, I've pref i always listen to this over two megatherian to tell the truth into the pandemonium has all the extra classical elements and it's a brilliant album but yeah this one is this is well, it's really not that raw to tell the truth it's uh bloody heavy as hell um so yeah the this this version though is a pretty recent reissue it's got all you know lyrics and stuff but I'll tell you what it comes with enough bloody extras that was probably why i got sucked into buying it they come with two posters of the band looking tough martin eric Ain taking incredible photos as as always i like this one i was like yeah there's my girlfriend look i'm i'm getting a bit <laughs> but um it also comes with this somewhere under all this crap comes with this huge friggin booklet much like the hellhammer one with um yeah lyrics and uh various pictures in there somewhere um where's the classic ones <laughs> yeah i'm gonna show that yeah <laughs> back in the days when tom wore i don't even know if he wore it on stage much i, I hope so um yeah <laughs> he's held it on but yeah this is a excellent version you know it's got little notes on each song um heaps of photos a big write-up from xavier russell and yeah just the full release version you could say so um yeah very happy to pick that one up uh i gotta i'm not sure if there's a same version of two megatherian because i don't have that one on record either so maybe i should track that one down but yeah if you don't know celtic frost bloody check them out this is the basis for you know half the extreme metal there is really up next are a couple i got from discogs uh, first up is undergang with Den Doppler Grav, or something or other in Danish. Uh, these dudes definitely my favourite Danish death metal band. I love these guys so much. Just putrid, nasty sound. They're the masters of the sludgy, gross sounding death metal, and it's just beautiful. Um, yeah, this has only got two songs. This is like the title track is the first song, which is bloody killer. Uh, and the second one is uh, Bolt Throw cover of Powder Burns, which they do very well. Um, it's nice to hear Bolt Throw with an even sludgier sound. and Powder Burns is one of the better songs off Mercenary for me, so um, yeah, this is uh, the first song is pretty doomy though in parts, and I love it. It sounds great. It's got the same production as uh, Myth and Troploglie or whatever the hell that, that album's called, because um, I think it was recorded at the same time. But yeah, nice to have a little EP. It um, comes with lyrics and spiffy photos, um, and yeah. Killer Art by David, who I think I called Daniel in a previous video, so sorry for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one, I assume this came out on their own label, but maybe not actually. It does have auto written on the back, whatever the hell that is, but oh well. Uh, this has got a poster of a cover art as well in it, but um, did yeah, yeah. I always like hearing both our covers. There's surprisingly not, not as many as you'd think. Uh, and I mean, they do justice to this. They sort of slow down the heavy bit at the end even more, so yeah, love it. So yeah, ah, I love this band. Good old Undergang. Ah, I really hope they tour Australia again because, yeah, the, the time they did was amazing. Also from Discogs is Satyricon with Rebel Extravaganza, which is their fourth album, I think. Uh, this, this, to tell the truth, is my favourite um, Satyricon. They've kind of moved away from the, you know, more medieval sound of their earlier stuff. Um, it's got a slightly sort of gritty industrial sort of sound much like the thorns album and um yeah which is unsurprising seeing i think Sata sings on the thorns album and snorri the main dude from thorns and legend um i think he did some extra guitars on this as well it's actually got fenris and anders as well from um cadaver on here so i forgot about all the guest stars and the like but yeah this is a, a recent reissue from napalm records with slightly more subtle use of their uh, logo on it and boys looking grim <laughs> but yeah oh, this this stuff is great uh this is um just prior to them sort of going rocky it's still got some rock sort of elements on it um oh, what's the song called havoc vulture is fairly obvious um 
but yeah this is still intense intense stuff <laughs> nasty as hell um and yeah frost is just one of the highlights of drama his blasting is just ridiculous on this especially on um the final song the scorn torrent <laughs> holy dooly it just keeps going for like about 10 minutes um yeah I, maybe maybe that was a farewell to that style because he he really blasts on the later albums after this which is probably why i don't really enjoy him a huge amount i mean this doesn't quite have the the level of you know fancy single kind of songs like your mother north or your um feel for hatred but yeah i, I like it a lot um i've got a my old pen pal from Chile, Natalia, was a huge fan of these guys, and so I've listened to the song Supersonic Journey a lot, because I think that was her favourite, and um, yeah, that's a, that's a bloody killer song. Um, yeah, this is, I don't know, you, you could tell they could taste the a bit more fame, but still had to put out a nasty, nasty black metal album. Um, and yeah, you, you really can't go too wrong off this. Uh, first song tied in bronze chains is bloody killer as well so yeah um, I'm, I am glad I finally got to see these guys when they actually they played Canberra I think and it was a killer gig I'm not sure how much they played off this I think they maybe played Havoc Vulture but that's uh, all a bit hazy but they were great fun live but yeah this definitely my favourite of theirs up next is one I got from Brad from Radical Boris this is Agathocles with their uh, Razor Sharp Daggers album uh, from 1990 six or somewhere around there this is a, a recent self-made god reissue with a different cover of similar poor tiger um yeah this is a, a belgian mincecore band i'm never quite sure what mincecore is to me it just sounds like normal grind but <laughs> oh well who cares it's sort of slowly gory sounding occasionally like he uses pitch shifter occasionally but most of the time just sounds like straight grind so anyway uh i never really got into this band a huge amount um initially i i've always had this their uh theatric symbolization of life album uh but it, i don't know it never really grabbed me there was um just sounded way too death metally for my liking but i have a feeling that's because i'd never really got past the first nine tracks which are the actual album because after that it's <laughs> a bit you know punkier grindier sounding so yeah i probably should have persisted but i'm kind of glad i didn't actually um suddenly start trying to collect these guys uh, I, I enjoy collecting stuff like autopsy and anatomia and a few other bands but um these guys uh, just checked it on discogs it's gone up about five releases since i last checked it's now 638 individual releases of these guys which are uh, totally dwarfs other you know mega bands that are always doing splits uh, unholy grave only has 167 and none slaughter only has 225 so yeah, <laughs> these boys are going well. I don't know how the quality control goes with 638 releases, but ah, what the hell. Um, maybe they just wake up and record something, and there, there we go, there's another one that'll do. But uh, at any rate, this album is killer. Uh, this has always been um, sort of bandied around as probably their better one, so I was like, yeah, what the hell, I'll grab it. Uh, we used to play it on radio show. My co-host Jones used to play it all the time. He was a big fan, so... And yeah, as you could probably tell from the covers there, somewhat PC and they have a lot of, you know, very political, good sort of sounding stuff in it. Um, this does come with lyrics and it's even, a, even a fancy story um, about them. So, but yeah, good old thrash collage. Can't go wrong with that. Um, but yeah, to tell the truth, this is just a good, good, damn good grind album. It's uh, catchy as hell good variety of songs lots of sort of punk attitudes really works sort of great so yeah i'm very happy to have this one um yeah if you if you're also wondering where to start this one's a, a classic so um yeah definitely check this one out up next are a couple of cds i got from a gig actually when i went to see cruelty from japan when they toured with honest crooks uh, i got their um a dying truth album and their split with terminal nation which is called the ruination of imperialism so um the album itself is yeah that that's the best i've heard of theirs although they've got a brand new album coming out uh, actually i think it's out now so i should be receiving that in next while um but yeah this is their proper album and pff, this is heavy as buggery these dudes are sort of like death metal hardcore almost this is a bit sort of a younger person stuff that i'm used to listening to but um yeah it's just swedish death metal with a lot of breakdowns basically <laughs> um and yeah it sounds killer on this um it's got a bit, a bit of the death doom sort of feel to it as well um 
and just, but just yeah really thick sound I think Vengeance is one of my favorites on here um, but yeah the whole thing is <laughs> impressive um, yeah some good mid pace mosh sort of bits as well as you, you know you chug a breakdown your bits but the mid pace live actually the mid pace mosh bits got the crowd just going berserk as soon as anytime you did double bass the crowd was just like ah! <laughs> um, I did I was planning on doing a uh, review of the gig but my footage is just shit out so yeah I should have taken my good camera along but how oh well. um but yeah this album is bloody killer the the split with Terminal Nation uh, Terminal Nation are a band from uh, Arkansas in America sound pretty bloody similar you know your death doom hardcore beatdown sort of style uh, they got some sort of gang vocals and raspier vocals work really well on this uh, makes kind of makes me keen to check out there i think it's was it holocene extinction album from a couple of years ago but yeah i'm quite impressed with them and the cruelty songs on here are good songs but production's a bit shitter um and yeah it's still tough as nails though and very keen to hear their new album uh, what's it called untopia so check that one out but yeah i was very pleased i could see cruelty live because they, they were killer really good fun last but definitely not least is um Another one I got from Discogs, I finally got a copy of Old Lady Drivers with their uh, self-titled album. Uh, this is, yeah, very old. This is like 1988 or 89 or something or other from Earache. This is Mosh number seven. So, uh, yeah, very happy to finally get that one. Yeah, this, this, I don't believe this has actually come out on, rec or on CD for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe there's a rights issue, but yeah, this is... Uh, it, you can see me ramble more about this in my Earache Top 25 video, but yeah, this is a bloody awesome album. Very early grind. I mean, this is recorded June 1988, so pretty early days. Um, very weird. A lot of it reeks of, you know, too many bongs in the studio, like, oh yeah, man, that'll sound awesome and weird and freak people out. There's some just bizarre bits in this. Really uh, strange, yelpy kind of vocals, but oh man, it's just amazing stuff. Um, that's fast as hell, bloody hell. I mean, not all of it is. There's some reason it's got a cover of cocaine on here and there's some other weird longer songs, but oh, it's bloody awesome. It comes with a nice sort of thrash collage of everyone looking very young, uh, including a toilet for some reason, class heel, and someone's ass. Anyway, um, but yeah, very, very happy to have this one. Uh, eh, it cost me a bit on Discogs, but nothing, nothing horrendous. Must have been one of those nights where I'd had a few beers and just went, yeah. Yeah, I, I want that. I need that. I don't have a proper copy of that at all, so what the hell. But, um, yeah, if you're interested in the very early days of Grind, yeah, this is a masterpiece for sure. And if you like your stuff kind of wacky, yeah, you'll love this. Oh, it's just a very impressive album, so, yeah, stoked to have this one. So, thanks for watching, and there'll be links to all the bands, well, uh, all the active bands below, so, um, yeah, I encourage you to check them out. And the distros and places where I got them from, so yeah, keep them keep them going. Um, yeah, the the March collection update piles already building up quite well, and there's still like what 11 days or so left to do. So um, yeah, that should be good. I'm also thinking of doing a video of my um, top British comedy TV shows. So maybe we'll get around to that at one stage. But I am thinking I better actually watch all these shows again. <laughs> So it's taking a bit of a while to, to prepare for that one, but um, yeah, there'll be more coming soon. Enjoy. See ya.